Hello and welcome to Sunset Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our special show, India Fights Back, focused on India's efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, today we're going to talk about uh, one very unique aspect of this battle, and that is India's vaccine diplomacy. In line with the spirit of Vasudev Kutumukam, India continues to lead in assisting other countries under its vaccine Maitri initiative amid this pandemic. Now, under this initiative, India has been providing made in India coronavirus vaccines to several countries. As of now, we've supplied this vaccine to 72 nations. Now, supplies are being undertaken in three broad ways. That is grant, commercial sales by the manufacturers and also through Gavi's COVAX facility. So today we're going to try and understand the contours of this initiative, also how it has helped other countries and global citizens as well, and how we manage to strike that balance between uh, meeting our own needs, our own requirements, as well as those of uh, uh, living in other countries. Uh, and for more on this, we're joined by two distinguished experts. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Urvashi Prasad, the public policy specialist at Niti Aayog. We're also joined by Dr. Santaspuj Das. Uh, he's a scientist F at ICMR and ICED in Kolkata. Welcome, both of you, to Sunset TV. Dr. Das and Urvashi, let me begin with you, Urvashi. And uh, let's start by understanding, uh, you know, the scale of this initiative what have we done in the past two, three odd months here? Right. So, um, you know, as you as you mentioned, the vaccine uh, Maitri initiative, it is really a continuation of uh, the way we have uh, seen this pandemic right from the start. We have seen it as a fight which needs to be uh, fought together. So, so we have not believed, uh, you know, just in nationalism, uh, but we have believed in helping countries whenever we can. So even last year, uh, whether it was through supplies, through medicines, in whichever way that we could help other countries after, of course, securing the requirements for our domestic population, we have done that. And it is in that spirit that we actually launched this Vaccine Maitri initiative, um, where we have already provided around 60 million uh, vaccine doses to, to almost 72 countries. And in fact, at least 92 countries have approached us. So this number might uh, go up uh, in the coming days. Um, and I think, as I said, at the crux of it, it is that we don't subscribe to vaccine nationalism. We, of course, want to uh, meet the needs of our own population fully, and and, the, and there is no compromise on that. But wherever we can help others, not just through supplying vaccines, but also providing the know-how of how do you carry out such a large vaccination program at scale? Uh, how do you manage the logistics? How do you manage the technology? We are also sharing that know-how uh, with many other countries who might not be able to uh, afford it or might not have access to it. So I think that is the spirit in which we have seen this entire initiative and in fact the entire pandemic uh, from the very start. Okay, okay. Dr. Das, your views there on uh, this, uh, you know, uh, very, very important task uh, which India has taken upon itself and successfully uh, worked on it as well in the past uh, few weeks uh, and the kind of, you know, help which has been uh, extended by us has uh, obviously been applauded uh, by everyone across the globe. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, I think um, uh, this is something that, you know, it's a, it's a great pride for our, us all Indians that, you know, we have, our country has extended this help to the, the poorest of the poor nations. Uh, and not only that, even the developed countries, you know, we have been approached, Indian vaccines uh, are now used in UK, which is, uh, uh, you know, the AstraZeneca vaccine that is being uh, produced in, uh, uh, at uh, Serum Institute. Canada has approached us. I mean, in fact, you know, one statistic says that um, the 16 percent of the population of the the developed world they have you know secured 60 percent of the global production of vaccine for their own uh, uh, population. So that is the the um, uh, uh, the magnitude of vaccine vaccine nationalism or vaccine you know race that has you know ugly vaccine race that has uh, come up and just you know, uh, exactly, you know, diagonally opposite to that, um, um, you know, from the very, uh, as the other speaker also mentioned, from the very first day, we have, you know, seen this uh, pandemic from a very different angle and, and also, you know, fighting the pandemic that we want to fight with all other nations, 
together. It's not a fight for uh, us only. And we, you know, rightly, um, you know, uh, realize that we are not free of the pandemic unless the last person in the world is free. So, you know, that's why, you know, we have extended this uh, help to uh, not only to our neighbors, but to, you know, far off countries in Africa who are, you know, really uh, struggling to get it. And it's not only vaccine, it started with, you know, much back, we supplied hydroxychloroquine, we supplied paracetamol when vaccine was not there. We supplied, you know, PPE kits to the, the world. We supplied, you know, uh, other, you know, uh, the, the testing uh, technology that we trained through, uh, you know, EI tech uh, program. So we, we trained about, you know, testing for the, uh, the virus detection. And then finally, now uh, that the vaccine, uh, as such, India is considered the pharmacy of the world, you know, so, uh, as we all know that 20% of the world's generic medicines are produced in India. And as high as 62% vaccines, uh, global vaccine production uh, takes place in India. Mm -hmm. So India already had the capacity for that. to manage. And then, you know, it's a government as well as I would, you know, certainly hail the, the courage uh, and the foresightedness of the CEO of uh, Serum Institute, who has, you know, long back placed, you know, uh, took a big uh, gamble, you know, uh, and, and uh, pledged uh, $1 billion uh, for the, the production of vaccine when the vaccine was not even, you know, approved. So that's, everything started much earlier. So that's why, you know, in such unprecedentedly, um, uh, you know, short time, we have produced so many vaccines, which we are catering to our own population, as well as to the world. I think, you know, this is something okay. that the... It rightly mentioned the whole world has uh, hailed, praised India's effort, and just you know recently uh, the the one uh, famous uh, uh, tropical medicine expert from ba Baylor College of Medicine said that India saved the humanity from this pandemic. So that's you know that's something you know is really to be very proud of as as an Indian. Okay, definitely India has played its part uh, very, very effectively here. But Dr. Das, there's one more uh, question here, and, and you know, uh, that comes out of the numbers, the figures which we are talking about, 60 million doses for 72 countries. Now, uh, one calculation is that this amount is almost double of uh, the vaccines uh, which have been, or the doses which have been used for our own population. So the question here is uh, that how have we managed to strike this balance, one, and, uh, you know, not let it affect our own vaccination drive. We have managed to strike that balance on both sides. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, because, you know, the first phase of vaccination drive went pretty well. Uh, it Probably the coverage was 50%, which is which I would say good. I mean, very few countries have um, really been able to, uh, to uh, achieve that. We know that even developed countries have struggled to get uh, people vaccinated, you know, at this scale. So uh, out of, you know, uh, three crore healthcare workers, uh, as I uh, just mentioned, 50% was vaccinated. But then the second phase started for the high-risk population, the old age, old aged population, as well as uh, people over 45 with comorbidities. And uh, that is also going on, you know, pretty well, uh, I would say. But uh, yes, this, there is a big challenge because India planned to vaccinate 300 million uh, people by August this year. So, which is in only uh, five months away. Uh, so that is a that is really a, a huge challenge, uh, I would say. Uh, and um, we have to keep that in mind. That you know, as government has also uh, uh, reiterated that you know we are not uh, helping other nations at the cost of our own safety and helping you because that doesn't also make sense because as you know everybody has to be protected uh, to provide protection uh, from the the pandemic so you know our own population cannot be neglected for sure um, now these 60 million 62 million vaccines that we have provided it's only the serum institute vaccine okay 
Okay, definitely. Uh, that is uh, really, really important there, you so know, now helping we have this others uh, while protecting uh, ourselves uh, as well there. Uh, Urvashi, your views there on this aspect, how we've managed to strike that balance so far and how it is really important and crucial to continue with this process. Uh, and this is uh, directly, uh, you know, uh, opposite to a vaccine nationalism approach, which has been, uh, you know, taken by uh, certain countries there. Yes, so so I think um, you know this question, of course, comes up a lot. That you know, are we in any sort of conflict with our national uh, priorities or requirements while uh, you know helping other countries? And I think it's it's important to understand that you know the initial phases for any such vaccination program, there are bound to be certain issues. It's a new disease. It's a new set of vaccines which are coming onto the horizon. So no matter how much you know the government or others try to convince people, a little bit of hesitancy to begin with is natural and is to be expected. Um, we've had vaccines around for decades, and and still with some of those vaccines, we find you know sometimes there's an element of hesitancy or there are some myths or there are misconceptions so i think that little bit of you know slowness in the progress if we can if we can say it in the initial phases is only to be expected and i think countries around the world have had to grapple with that in different ways let alone a country as large and diverse as ours but then as you would have seen that in the last few days um, and weeks, the pace of vaccination has really picked up. You know, we we are in a position to do three million, you know, upwards of three million doses a day, um, and that is very encouraging because now that we are in the second phase where we are not, you know, just looking at the health workers and frontline workers, but we have really widened out the scope of vaccination to people above 60 years of age, to people above 45 with serious comorbidities. Uh, it's important that we are really picking up this pace of vaccination now. Uh, so that we can achieve our target numbers in a relatively short uh, time frame or the time frame that we have set for ourselves. So I think to that extent, uh, we should now be confident that the pace of vaccination will only pick up from here on in. We also have several other candidates which are under development. So even the number of vaccines which might become available in the weeks and months to come might go up. Uh, so that will further help accelerate our efforts. So I think there is really no conflict uh, between what we are doing for our domestic population as well as what we are doing for countries around the world. Um, because eventually, you know, as I said at the beginning, that we have to fight this together. We cannot think about it, you know, just within our uh, borders. You know, it, it, it is something that extends well beyond that. So I think that approach is is absolutely the right one. And, and okay. people should be rest assured that we are prioritizing our domestic needs and there is no compromise on that front. Okay, indeed, uh, it is uh, uh, really, really important. And this goes beyond borders, uh, as you're pointing out, Ruvashi. But one, uh, uh, you know, this this entire initiative, the Vaccine Metri Initiative and the requirement, the domestic requirement as well, and obviously the global requirement, all that will uh, is it's likely to get a lot of push uh, with that uh, Quad initiative, uh, uh, you know, uh, based on that decision which was taken during uh, the uh, Quad Leaders Virtual Summit, wherein uh, India will produce vaccines and the logistics uh, uh, of, of, you know, Australia and Japan will be utilized. Uh, finance uh, uh, will also come in uh, uh, from uh, the other two nations, that is US and Japan. So, so sort of, a, you know, uh, 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 sort of a, a contributory approach here, all four countries working together and India's prowess as uh, a vaccine manufacturer can uh, further, uh, you know, fuel this initiative. Yes, that's right. And and of course, you know, manufacturing, we, we are uh, a vaccine hub uh, for the world and we, vac you know, supply so many other uh, vaccinations. So I think that is something that that is a given. Uh, but along with that, you know, also comes our expertise of, of distribution, of actually implementing large scale vaccination programs. Uh, the use of technology at this kind of scale uh, is something that even developed countries would be very interested in because, you know, while they might be using technology, uh, they don't have to do it at the kind of scale uh, that that we are we are doing it and we have been doing it for years now you know with even with our childhood immunization programs uh, we have the experience of of implementing such large scale initiatives so i think that know how 
that India brings to the table is also equally important um, because you can have the financing, you can have the manufacturing, you know, wherewithal. Uh, but if you don't know how to do the distribution, you don't know how to manage logistics at scale, uh, that can be very challenging. So I think India brings both its manufacturing prowess as well as the know-how of how to go about such large-scale vaccination programs. So I think that both of those are advantages for India here. Okay, okay. So understanding the entire process, as Urvushi is pointing out, you know, not only the fact that we can and we are manufacturing a majority of uh, the uh, global uh, vaccine, specifically in COVID-19 case, uh, but also how to distribute them, how to, you know, ensure that the entire process is run smoothly. Let's also understand uh, what are the vaccines are around the corner. Dr. Dr. Das, you know, uh, uh, if you could uh, update us and our viewers on, on uh, what else is happening uh, on, on the vaccine development front. Uh, there, are, there are other candidates as well, we understand, on which a lot of work is going on. And uh, what are the timelines there? What can we expect? Yeah, so, you know, several other vaccines are already in the uh, the clinical trial stage other than these uh, two approved ones uh, in India, obviously, the, the Serum Institute vaccine and Covaxin. And there are other approved vaccines in the West, like uh, Moderna vaccine and Pfizer vaccine, but they are, you know, more sophisticated technologies require, you know, they are bound to be very expensive. Uh, require very low temperature for maintenance and all these things. So, uh, uh, not sure if you know, with how much that would be useful for the, the developing world, um, unless this is, you know, there are some uh, the, the um, uh, philanthropic funds come into it. Uh, so um, uh, that, that, that's another an part. And then there are some other vaccines, you know, the, which will be, you know, relatively uh, cheaper vaccine uh, that, that are also in the, in the stage of development, uh, like DNA-based vaccine, uh, which will not be uh, other DNA-based vaccine, which will not be very uh, expensive. There are some vaccine, you know, only taking the the which which are called subunit vaccine. So as we know that there is a particular protein of the virus that is responsible for uh, for binding to the to our body uh, receptor, mm -hmm. and then you know the virus to enter. So you know there are vaccines uh, being developed targeting that protein. So these are called subunit vaccine. They are also going to be much cheaper and will not require very low temperature. So they are also uh, under development. So as many as you know, uh, six vaccines are at you know the stages of clinical trial, different stages. You know, phase one, phase two. There are other vaccines, uh, as many as uh, like in total, thirty vaccines are in the uh, developmental stage. So some are in the as I mentioned, there's some in the clinical trial stage, some are preclinical, we call, you know, they are being tested in uh, animals in the laboratory. So after they are successful, they will come into the, the clinical trial stage. So uh, the, the hope is that uh, by 2021, uh, you know, there'll be uh, like six, six to eight vaccines may enter uh, the, the market, I mean, for human use. Um, and um, 2022, uh, uh, you know, more vaccines, many more vaccines will come okay, because okay. The, the pandemic perhaps going to stay. Uh, but virus is, as we have seen, you know, already that the, there is some talks about second wave in India, third wave in some uh, other countries. So maybe, you know, the, this pandemic will continue for some time and the requirement of for vaccine will, will remain. So, yes, I mean, more and more vaccines will become in due course. Okay, okay, that uh, is is a pretty much uh, positive news out there, which uh, Dr. Das is pointing out, and you know more uh, the number of vaccines are there, more there'll be chances of people, uh, more and more people getting vaccinated, and uh, we can fight this pandemic in a much better way. But uh, Urushi, I'd like to bring you in here, and you know when we're talking about the vaccine metri initiative or the vaccine diplomacy, it's actually not only limited to vaccines here, and it's not just that you know we started it just around two three months back, as Dr. Das was mentioning. Mentioning. You had also earlier, you know, spoken about uh, this aspect on our show earlier. Is that India, you know, opened its uh, doors and started helping other countries and nations uh, at the very beginning, at the very outset itself, with medicines, with supplies, uh, be, be it PPE kits uh, or uh, masks and uh, different other medicines which were being worked upon. So, so that is something which which we had started long back, and its vaccines are just a sort of an extension of that initiative. 
Yes, that's right. And um, I think this is a very important, um, you know, philosophy that we have actually adopted. And, and going forward, in fact, from the pandemic, uh, it would do the whole world a lot of good if we actually move forward with this approach, because a lot of these challenges, um, as we've been discussing, go beyond, you know, just your borders and go beyond your territory. So, you know, you might feel that you are safe, you're protected. Uh, but now with all the travel that happens, you know, we are living in a truly globalized world. Uh, people are constantly moving, you know, across borders. So while you might feel like this is not my problem, uh, very quickly it can become your problem. So I think it's very important uh, that India has taken a sort of leadership role uh, when it comes to this whole philosophy of Co cooperation and collaboration and you know as you said we've done it throughout whether we could provide uh, you know supplies medicines now vaccines and also know-how you know and 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 we have also brought about a lot of attention to countries which might have weaker health systems which might not have the economic uh, ability we've also paid a lot of attention to our neighborhood uh, so I think these are all very, very important uh, steps that India has taken. And as I said, they are all part of a broader philosophy that we are all in this together. And, and none of us is safe and secure until every single person uh, on this planet is safe. So I think that approach and that philosophy is really important. And it's, it's wonderful to see India take a leadership role in this area. Definitely. India has taken a leadership role there and uh, played its part very successfully based on that, uh, you know, principle, that philosophy, which uh, all Indians uh, uh, believe in, that is Vasudeva Kutumukam. And we played that part. We are still helping. We started uh, with the onset of the pandemic itself with medicines, uh, with uh, uh, PPE kits, other equipments as well, and now with vaccines. And as our experts, both uh, Urvashi and uh, Dr. Das were pointing out, a lot more is in the store. Thank you so much, Urvashi and Dr. Das, for sharing your views and insight on this aspect with our viewers. And uh, before we go, let us also remind you that while vaccines are around the corner and vaccination drive is on in full swing, we are doing all the, uh, you know, all our best to help uh, uh, others uh, across the globe as well. But Let's not forget about the COVID-appropriate behavior. We can't let our guard down. And uh, COVID-appropriate behavior is just a three-step simple process which we need to follow. First is we should wear a mask at all times when we are in public places. Also ensure that we wash our hands regularly. Hand hygiene is really important. And maintain physical distancing of at least six feet as well from others. Now, these three simple steps will go a long way in ensuring your protection as well as the protection of your near and dear ones. So that's all we have in this episode of India Fights Back. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.